Welcome back, War Room fans. Okay, here we go. War College. We're going to do expectations of combat. So one of the things about, you know, for the new guys out there, you know, you might have already got a, a game under your belt or maybe two. Uh, some of the, the guys who are just getting it or getting ready to play. It sounds like this weekend, I know on the Facebook uh, page, a lot of people are saying they just got it and they got their games lined up for this weekend coming up or next weekend. So, and this even is kind of helpful, I think, for some of even the veteran players. Uh, we're just going to talk about expectations of combat. So, basically right here, what I did, oops, was, okay, so let's talk about combat. This isn't technically combat odds. This is a system that I've come up with, and Bryce and I have kind of, we've discussed it numerous times. But it's a way to kind of mentally look at the game to figure out roughly combat odds. How, how much damage am I gonna take? Because as Bryce has pointed out in some of our officer lounges, the thing about War Room is, unlike, we'll take it Axis and Allies, which is its cousin. In Axis and Allies, you're rolling so you're rolling on each of these to hit. Like, well, I got four infantry, I'm rolling to hit three, you know. So you're, you're trying to hit the other guy. In War Room, you're always getting hit. And so it's like reversed. And so the luck factor comes in on how many misses the other guy just generates in his big batches because every, everything is basically, you have to assume almost every die is gonna be a hit in War Room. So once you start understanding that, then this follow-up video I'm gonna do is just gonna be about principles of combat and situations of unbalanced combat, which I will get into in some detail because unbalanced combat is the big, the big hurdle I think a lot of people have to get over in, in War Room and I'll explain that concept. Let's just go over this system, okay? So here's how I always look at a combat. These are basically what I'm assuming is gonna happen for every batch of 10. Now let's just deal with the land combat, okay? When I'm looking at the board and I'm trying to figure out, you know, roughly, okay, so what are the, you know, I'm trying to add them up. So let's, Let's start at square one. So how I how I look at it and how I use this system. So let's just slide it over here because I got a big battle set up to do an example with. But basically how I would look at a stack like the 61st here, and it, it, this applies to all, it applies to everything. Just assume everything is defensive when you're analyzing the map, looking at your stacks, looking at their stacks, just assume because it, it keeps it easy in your brain and you don't start overthinking it. So if you assume everything is in defensive, well, armor's two, artillery's two, infantry are one. So this is a 10 stack. This is a 10 strength unit. So you right there, you know you have 10 dice on the 61st. The 33rd has two infantry, so that's two. And then, so, you know, the 33rd is a six unit, okay? So if these two attack together, you know if they're in defensive, you have 16 dice, okay? So then you go, oh, well, I can bring in these guys. And then you just quickly look at them and go, okay, these are all six stacks in strength, and this is a 10 stack. So if you can start looking at your units and just keep it really simple, just go armor and artillery or two, Infantry are one each. Assume everything's going to defensive. We can play around with the offensive stance on the armor, you know, on the various units once we hit the battle board, but just assume everything's going defensive and specifically to the ground, okay? Meaning for the artillery, uh, you, you know, so everything is factored in on the ground, not the anti-air. So, this is one way to just identify quickly, like looking at the map, you know, when you're writing your orders, one of the things about War Room that's different than Axis and Allies is, is War Room, as we all know that we've played it, you know, even the first time, is we're constantly doing stuff. We're constantly moving. 
Everybody's interacting in all the phases. In Axis and Allies, you actually have an opportunity because of how that game works is where, okay, it's Germany's turn, then it's Russia's, then it's Japan, you know. And so you, if you're playing Germany, you might literally have 45 minutes to just sit there and contemplate, look at the map. Every turn in Axis and Allies is a static setup. It's a set piece combat. So as you're sitting there for 40 minutes, the Russians are moving, you know they're not gonna move. You can sit there and just contemplate, reflect, meditate, calculate everything. Axis and Allies, because of how it works, has hit calculators. So you could be sitting on your phone, figuring out your move, going on, should I attack here? And you can get a percentage. War Room doesn't have calculators. The number one reason, in my opinion, the reason why we don't have calculators is because a battle calculator like an Axis and Allies is a helpful tool because it's a set piece combat. Every combat in Axis and Allies is a set piece. You already know what he's gonna have, you already know what you're gonna have or what you can bring in and you can put it in a calculator and determine if this is a good or bad attack. War Room, you can't do that because you have no idea who's gonna be in that territory. You know, part, you know half the equation, you know your side, but you have no idea. Like on the Russian front here, you go, well, I'm gonna attack the Caucasus and they have units down there, but who knows when it comes to turn order and movement, all of a sudden what looked like a rollover combat turns into something like this. And so what are you gonna do? I mean, well, let me pull out my calculator real quick. Well, no, it's too late. The combat's already, you know, it's already in battle territory. All the units have been moved in. Now, let's say, you thought the caucuses was gonna be a roll, roll over and then all of a sudden the 23rd and 26th showed up. Well, right off the bat, you go, well, I already have all four of these units going in. So take like a, cause you already know what's going on here, guys. You've already figured it out in your brain. I know I got 10, six, six, I got 28 here. So you just look over at the Russian real quick and go, uh, he's got, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. He's got 26 on defense. Is that a battle you want to do? So you can just look at it and do that simple system to give you a really good clue of what's about to happen, okay? And that's what this is over here, okay? So let's say this battle goes down in the Caucasus. And... Let's say Russia moved first. So they're, they're sitting there and Germany wrote all these orders. So it's, it's up to Germany if they want to go in. And you go, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm pushing in. Okay. So it's 28 on 26. Okay. Now, we're going to do, well, let's just assume, because it's going to be easier for the example if we just assume if everybody has 30. Okay. So how you can do that is when you go into combat, that's when on the battle board you go, well, I want 30. So the Germans could flip one armor into offensive or two infantry into offensive. These guys have 26, they can do the same thing. So let's just assume both sides on the battle board manipulated it so they have 30 combat dice, okay? So I didn't put any air in here deliberately. Um, because that's going to be about the next video. That's going to be air power and stuff is going to be in the next video about tactics and unbalanced combat. Okay, so here's the expectation. So we both know we're having the big throwdown in the caucuses. Both sides get to roll 30 dice. The expectation in the combat is that they're going to roll four yellow, three blue, and two green on every batch of, of 10. Okay. Now, you can go, Payne State, that's statistically, that doesn't seem right. You know I mean, because the odds are, you know, these guys, technically, these are only a one in six chance on a 10, but you have two green. That's where this black and white come in, okay? Dice are capricious. I have no idea what they're gonna roll. All I can do is go on this little model here to at least figure out, you know, how much damage I'm gonna take on my units. Now, the reason why I put the green up here is I'm assuming, there is some assumptions going on here, that if they roll a black, they're always gonna put it on the green, okay? So that's why 
I just switched it over to the green, okay? Now let's say you don't have any armor. Well, the assumption then is if he rolls a black, it's gonna turn into a blue. Now the artillery is getting hit at the same rate as the infantry is getting hit, okay? So you always assume the black is going to the highest rank order, green, then blue, then white. That's how I came up with this 432 model is what I call it. So the first batch of 10 comes out, you, you know, so this is what you're assuming. And so the assumption at the end of the day is, I know he's gonna roll three batches. So I'm gonna most likely take 12 yellows, okay? Obviously there's a plus minus of maybe one or two in here, depending on luck factors. I'm gonna assume I'm gonna take nine yellow because remember we're rolling three batches and I'm gonna take six green hits. Now what throws, one of the reasons why combat calculators are hard in this game is, is because let's say it doesn't come out as, as this. But remember, as I said guys, every die is gonna hit. The only way in land combat you miss is if you roll the dreaded red, okay? So I'll get to that in a second, how to calculate the dreaded red in, okay? So what's gonna happen here is, is let's say he doesn't roll four, he only rolls two. Well, these two are gonna go up here most likely somewhere. I have no idea. So as you can see, that's gonna throw off what actually happens but when you go into the combat, basically what you're assuming is on a big battle like this, I'm gonna lose six infantry. I'm gonna take nine hits on artillery, so I'm definitely losing four. I might lose five. And then on my armor, I'm taking six hits, but they're all in defensive, so I'm gonna lose three armor, most likely. There's obviously gonna be a plus one, minus one factor here, plus depending on where the whites are, but we can't calculate the whites, okay? So when you're looking at a big battle like I just showed over here, like with these Russians, when the before the dice are even rolling, if you just go, I assume I'm losing six infantry, I'm gonna most likely lose four or five of my artillery and most likely three of my armor, you kind of go in with, okay, I, I see what's going on. Now, that's the thing about it is, let's say, now remember, the most hits you can possibly do in a combat round is 30, okay? So this is nine. So this is 27 hits on 30 dice. Whites can turn into misses, but they can also turn into hits. So the expectation on a 30 combat die combat is, you realistically should expect you're gonna take most likely 26 to 28 hits. Now, one thing that does mess with it sometimes is let's say you blow up all, they, they come in, you, the first batch you just take out, so he no longer has infantry. So this is what's left for the last two batches. It doesn't change up though the big calculation. Don't get hung up on round by round. Oh, well now he has X percent chance to miss. Don't look at it that way. Just always assume he's gonna roll roughly this four, three, two average. And so after the three batches are rolled, that's how it should be. So you just triple this. So 12, nine, six. That's roughly how much damage you're gonna take on a 30 on 30 combat. Now force advantage, if let's say I have 30 dice, Let's, or I take that back. Let's say I don't have force advantage, meaning the other guy has taken me. So I, you know, I don't have, I don't get blacks and whites. So this is going to be, the average then is going to look something, these are kind of like halves. I'm not really sure, you know, because as I said, the dice are fickle. You have no idea. But going into, if you don't get blacks and whites, it's going to look more like this. You can expect to hit nine, six, and three. So the blacks and whites will make a difference if you don't get them. So on your expectation of hitting stuff. So if you don't, if you roll 30 dice and you don't get blacks and whites, your range is going to be, you're going to inflict about 22 to 24 hits on the other guy. Now, remember when I say he takes 24 hits, well, that means he's going to lose 12 units. Now, I obviously understand the armor has three hits and these guys have one. 
But once again, let's keep it simple. Let's not overthink it uh, because that just drives you crazy. So if you do 24 hits against, let's say, the, the Russians over here, they're going to lose 12 guys. They're going to probably lose four infantry, uh, three artillery, and one tank if they're all in defensive. So that's how, that's how I look at it on ground combat, okay? Just follow the 4-3-2 principle. So when you're, when you're looking at it going, okay, now I understand. If it's a 30-die combat, and everybody's getting blacks or whites, you just have to kind of go in knowing it. You're gonna lose probably 13 to 14 units. You don't know what color type you're gonna lose. Now, obviously, if let's say they blew up all your yellows, that number is gonna come down because that, the 432 principle also is just assuming infinite amount of colors on each side. But it doesn't change the expectation. You can still go, okay, well, I already know going in, I'm losing my yellows, so I'm not even concerned about the yellows. So my infantry are all dead. I only have three infantry, they're toast. But you can at least look at it this way, go, well, what about my artillery and my armor? How much of that's gonna lose? Because I have a lot of those in my in my stack, okay? So, you know, if you're going into a 30 on 30 combat, and so basically what this means is if you have less than six infantry, if you have, let's say, five or less infantry, you can just assume they're all going to be dead. If you go into a 30 on 30 with three artillery, you can just assume they're dead. And same thing with the, with the armor. If you have two armor, just assume they're dead. So, like, when you're coming into a combat, let's say this 30 on 30 combat, but they got 30 dice, but they only have one or they only have two armor in this Russian stack. The Russian player already knows his armor's dead. Okay, that also goes into combat principles. If you already know the color is dead, then you just put everything on offensive and get as many dice as you can. Hits be damned. Because he's gonna be dead anyway. If I put him in defensive, he's dead. Put him in offensive, he's dead. So it doesn't matter. Give me as many dice as I can get, okay? So we'll go over a little bit of that more in combat principles. Uh, on when to just say to heck with it and just throw everything in offensive. Now, so this is how the, this, so this is the principle of the 432, kind of give you an idea of what to expect if you get in this huge 30 on 30. So if you get on a 20 on 20 combat, you just, you just double this up, okay? That's kind of your expectation. So, it's, you know, you're going to lose eight, you're going to take eight, six, and four. When we get into the 10 die batch or less, this comes into just, you know, the calculating odds and variables and stuff. The larger the sample size, the more the, the sample goes to the average or the mean. In war room battles that where like one side is only rolling, well, I got five dice and he's got six dice. That's where the fickle nature of dice really show up in this game. This 432 does not apply basically to combats under batches of 10. So like if it's a six against a five, I have no clue what's gonna happen. Just roll the dice and I just cross my fingers and I don't get hosed. Uh, that's all you can really do. Uh, so this principle is really for uh, up to, you know, the 20 to 30 band and the 10 to 20 band. So let's say it's not the even numbers, 30 and 20. Let's say it's I have 28 combat dice. So you have to, so if you have 28 combat dice, you're kind of looking at it, well, 14 is the max I can kill. That's what you're thinking in your brain. So if I can get, if I can get 12 of them, so I, if I can get around 24 hits, that's a reasonable expectation in combat. Because, you, because, because as I said, you're gonna have, you might have some missing colors appear, but also the whites show up at the wrong time, the reds, you know, you get on that crazy streak where you pick up a batch of 10 and roll it and you roll three reds and you're like, well, I wish I was doing a naval combat. You know, that's how this game goes. You know, we are, we are using 12 sided dice that don't like you. So that's the land combat. Now let's move up here to the air combat. So there's two scenarios in air combat. The, the first scenario in air combat is you're coming in with just air units. So just like the tanks, the expectation is two, two hits. But because you only have that one color, these blacks are all gonna become greens, okay? 
So it's really like a two and a, it's like a two and a half per batch is kind of what you can expect on each batch of 10 if you just bring in fighters. So if let's say you, you have a massive air combat and you know, you got both sides have 30 and anti-air and all you have is, or you know, they have 30 and anti-air and all you have is fighters, you can assume you're gonna take about seven and a half hits. You know, you get lucky, you get unlucky, you might take nine and a half. You get kind of lucky, you only take six. So you can already know going in, well, my expectation is on a 30 anti-air attack against all my aircraft, I'm most likely gonna take six to, six to eight hits. I'm gonna lose three or four fighters on a 30 combat die. Now, so this is if you only bring in fighters. This one over here is if you bring in fighters and bombers. So the re so normally it would be something like that, but now once again we're going to make the assumption that the blacks are going to turn in to reds. So it's like a one and a half again. We're not quite sure, okay? So as you can see, now you have an equal chance of hitting both types at an equal odds. So you basically have a one in six chance of hitting either color. And then, you know, whites are, of course, the bane of everything because in air-to-air -air combat, whites and blacks always count. So you kind of have to factor that in. So if you just go in, if you just go into the combat and you have a split like this and it's 30 anti-air come against these guys, you just go in assuming you're going to take six hits on fighters and six hit on, on bombers. So you're going to lose three of each. So... That's kind of how I look at it. Does it work that way every time? Of course not. There's always, you know, that's the big thing about the, the way the game works. But this will at least kind of get you in the, the framework of when you're looking at combats going, well, do I really want to strap bomb Germany knowing they have 30 anti-air in there? And if I go in there, I'm most likely going to lose at least three bombers. I might get unlucky and, and lose four. I might get lucky and only lose two. Okay, but so I think you guys understand now where I'm coming from. It's a frame of it's a frame of mind. So you kind of understand. Okay, here's what's about to happen. You know, on this big Titanic throwdown over here, that you know, if he rolls to this average, the the Russian player is only going to have maybe two armor left and the German player most likely will have two, four, six. He'll have like two of these guys left to one of these guys. And cause he has so much armor, he might have three armor left. So at the end of the day, the journey in this configuration of combat, you know, you're going to end up with Germany, you know, because they also have a lot more, they have a couple more units. So you're going to end up with, you know, like four armor, one artillery, and like two infantry left facing off against like two tanks, and the cock and, and the caucuses would be embattled. So that's the expectation. When you go in, just go, okay, I'm rolling, I'm we're we're throwing down, and I'm gonna expect for 13 or 14 of those units are all gonna be gone. Now when you add up the other way, another way of looking at them is you add up what are called hit points. So two, four, six, eight, because we're on defense, but he's on armor. So that's a 10 defense, 10 defense, 10 defense. So that's 38, 40, 42, 46, 48. So another way of looking at combat is I have 48 hits to give here. So even if he rolled max damage of 30, and I have 48 hits to give, I already know I'm gonna have 18. So I'm gonna have approximately, not quite nine, because remember armor gives you the extra. So that's another way of looking at it. If you're, you know, it depends on how your mind works when it comes to mathematics. So you know, you're gonna have at least 18 hit points worth of units still left in this. Don't know what color they are. I don't know what configuration, no idea. But at least you know, I have 18 hits left. That's another way of looking at it. If you're trying to figure out at the last minute, 
okay, I'm attacking these guys. Well, how many hits does the Russians have? They got four, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, another 16 and two. So that's 32, 34, 34 plus eight is 42. So these guys have 44 hits on them. That's how, that's their defensive factor. So even if the Germans roll max damage, which I, in all the games I've played in, which is a lot, I've never seen anybody actually roll a 30 die max damage. I think I've seen it one time where it was a 29. It usually always comes in in that 26 to 28 range is how many hits you inflict on them, okay? So if it was a 30 hit here and a 30 hit here, the Germans are gonna have 18 hit points left here and the Russians are gonna have 16 hit points left here. So it's gonna be a relatively even stack of units still in the Ukraine. That's another way of looking at it. Instead of just looking at it, well, how many hits am I gonna be dish out? Well, how many hits can I take? And so then if you realize, oh, even if he rolls max damage, I'm gonna survive. Well, then you can breathe a sigh of relief and go, well, I just hope he only hits me 26 times instead of 30, okay? So the thing about naval combat is, guys, I'm not gonna flip the board, but basically it's the same thing. It's a four, three, two, but now if battleships are involved, there's a, a one, the red. The other thing about naval combat, guys, you have to wrap your head around is, you know, everybody who's played the game, we always have the cataclysmic showdown off of uh, the Solomon Islands where all the navies right off the bat, the United States, Britain, Japan, all converge. If there's 30 dice involved, naval combat, you can't miss. Every, every result in that first batch of 10 will be a hit of some sort. And the only way the white is gonna miss is if somehow on your batch of 10, I don't even think it's possible. You'd have to roll an even number of every color, but there's only four colors. So, and, and so then you'd have to roll four of one color and even, of, so what I'm getting at is guys, the whites will hit guaranteed on that first batch. The caveat is the subs, but the white will basically, you just have to assume it's hitting. So that's why naval combat when you get into the, you know, those, it usually happens only at the beginning of the game because once it happens, no one has navies left. Because once you do a 30 on 30 naval showdown, everybody's navies are gonna get blown up. Everybody's gonna take about 28 to 29 hits. Well, depending on how many units are left after the first batch of two, but basically they're just gonna mop up everything. And that's why the game degenerates into everybody just has battleships left at the end of the first two rounds because everybody just decided to throw all their navies in these cataclysmic battles and everything's been destroyed. And that's because of how these dice, it's how the combat system works. You're not rolling to hit, you're basically rolling and praying to God that somehow they miss. And the chances of you missing are pretty low guys, it, it really is. The, you know, some guys say, well, but you know, come on, Payne said, if, if, if we're mono stacked and all we have are blues here, well, the blues only get hit four times. I, I'm maximizing my odds of the miss. Yeah, that's true, but the, having a mono stack, there's a lot, there's negatives associated with having mono stacks, especially now with the fourth batch cap rules and, um, that really penalizes you for having just like a mono stack of artillery or, or armor. It doesn't matter. Okay. So that's where I'm going to leave it guys. So I hope it makes sense. Just remember the four, three, two principle when you're looking at these, at these stacks. So you kind of understand what's about to happen. If you're in that 20, you know, that, 20 combat die situation, 30 combat die, and you can also calculate your hit points once you get more familiar with it. But that's a skill you have to develop because you don't have time at the table to sit here and look at it for 20 minutes and figure out all your moves and calculate all your combat dice. You don't have time. You gotta get really good at just looking at stacks and, and just assume they're defensive so that, you know, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so I got 24, 
You know, I got 24 combat dice right here. Obviously I can manipulate it, but my base is 24. And then you can, and then it, once you get really good at that, then you can actually calculate your, your hit points. So I got three tanks, that's 12. Each of these are two. So I got six or three times, I got nine, 18, 12. I got 30 hits here in those three stacks on defensive. Okay. So that is combat expectations, guys. So I hope it was clear. You kind of have a better understanding now of what you're getting into, especially when you get into these big combats. When you get in the small combats, that really is kind of the luck of the die roll. I mean, that's, that's the territory you find yourself in in War Room um, when you have really small combats of under like eight. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna leave it off. And then the next video I'm gonna talk about combat principles, unbalanced combat, and specifically the relationship between air and ground and air and naval. So I'll talk to you guys later.